What's going on, good people? It's now less than a week before the NBA draft, which means, well, free agency is around the corner, and the fate of the Portland Trailblazers <laughs> probably hangs in what Neil O'Shea gets done uh, over the next two weeks. Hooray! Uh, this is probably the most pressing time uh, in the Damian Lillard era. I guess that's the way one way to put it. Um, I'll come flat out and say it. I'm not optimistic. So if you're if you're here looking for that, I mean, well, I mean, if you've listened before, you're not here looking for that. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, but it is a Mailbag Monday uh, edition, so I have got a pile of questions to go through. Um, shout out to everybody who, who got questions in this week. It is a ton. Um, and they aren't all, how do you trade Dame? What would you trade Dame? It's kind of running the gamut, which is, is nice. Um, I've, I've got a Dame-centered piece coming out probably later this week um, that has nothing to do with trading him. So there you go. That's something to look forward to. Uh, so without further ado, let's kind of jump into this. Um, I know I said that, that you know that uh, it's not all Dame, but I'm gonna hit the first one from Eric at Eric B B D X. Assuming Dame says he wants out of Portland either at the Olympics or at the trade deadline, and assuming the Vulcans do not want Olshe orchestrating any trades at that point, who do you see running the ship? I've said in the past, pretty bluntly and plainly that I don't want Neil Olshea doing it because I don't think he's going to be here for the long haul because I believe the team's going to be sold in the next 18 months to two years. Just kind of based on what I've heard. Um, and so I don't want him deciding the future. I, I, I think he's failed pretty miserably with every large scale transaction that has needed to take place. Um, the fact that they haven't <laughs> been able to get it done. Um, as far as who's out there, uh, I would assume that if it did be, you know, if it was wholesale changes, um, Dennis Lindley, excuse me, Dennis Lindsley, Lin- Lindsay, good Lord, Dennis Lindsay, the former GM of the Utah Jazz, uh, who's just kind of sitting off at the side right now. Uh, they've made some changes there. I thought he did a fantastic job building up the Utah Jazz. It's another small market team, understands what they need to do uh, as far as retaining assets, making moves, except for he's actually, you know, made moves. Uh, Landon Mike Conley brought in Bogdanovich. Um, you can say what you want about, you know, the uh, Gobert contract, but he's also a defensive player of the year. They drafted Donovan Mitchell. Like, they've done really well. Um, more successful than the Blazers, I think, um, as far as uh, overall team building. And you can argue the semantics of, well, the Blazers made a Western Conference Finals and, and all that kind of stuff, but I, I still think the Jazz are a better built team. Um, that, that's somebody I would definitely pursue in that regard. Um I just think he's really good at his job. Uh, Let's see. Jeremy Kreklow at Strife. Uh, If Beal asked out of Washington, do you think they could do some form of three-way trade then for Philly? Uh, Beal in Philly, Ben in Portland, and Washington walks away with the Kings' ransom of picks from both teams. Uh, The intel that I've kind of had recently is that if Beal is going to get out of Washington, I think he ultimately ends up in Golden State. Uh, I'm recording this Sunday night, and I've heard some stuff about Simmons possibly being moved, uh, staying in the Eastern Conference. So, uh, I, I, and from what I have heard about what the package looks like, um, Portland can't match that. So, um, yeah, I think that one's kind of dead. <laughs> I think it's less about Portland landing the Beals and Simmons of the world, and. Um, what what can they get for CJ that lines up with the next generation's timeline? Yeah, bummer. Uh, also from Strife, I'm convinced Kawhi stays in Clip City, but if he did leave, what do you think a package for PG-13 could look like? Well, the Clips have no picks for apparently the next decade. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's being facetious, but uh, yeah, they they need capital. All of their youth is gone. Um, if somehow that did happen and that was like a break glass in case of emergency for Portland, they, I would expect the Clippers would want both Nasir and Ant and probably picks and CJ to make the salary work, which, I mean, you're taking a lot. Um, but if it made sense for Dame, if you're committed to, like, no doubt, figuring this out, I I think the Blazers are trying to play this safe and not do that. They're going to split the fence and ended up running it back or <sighs> hook on as a third team in a part of a bigger deal. But um, I think that's kind of where we're at. 
Classic Robin at Rip City Robin. Who can Olshay realistically trade CJ for? And does that trade make the Blazers contenders? I think those are mutually exclusive. I don't think the Blazers can trade CJ for anybody that will make them contenders. I the time to trade CJ was literally five years ago. And this is this isn't my I told you so moment, but it's kind of an I told you so moment. It's shocking. The two guards that are relatively the same size and overlap a ton and have the same deficiencies. Um, they didn't work out. So now he's 30 years old. He's not dead. I mean, but the difference between a 25 year old and a 30 year old is drastically different. Um, and you look around the league right now, it's not hard to find scoring guards. That's not something that's like this sought after commodity. You can find somebody who can do close to an approximation of what CJ does for a fraction of the price. Um, the Blazers don't have any other assets because they screwed 2016 up so bad because they screwed 2017 in the draft up so bad. They haven't been able to really recoup anything along the way. I think Ant's a good pick. I think Nas is a good pick, but again, those are the back end of, of the first round. Um, and I think those guys are still developing. So you don't have like this pile of assets to go get what you need, which I, again, I think is what we're signaling the end of the Damian Lillard era uh, in that regard. Uh, the final end of the part of the question was, it's more of a statement than anything else. I just don't see any options to keep Dame here after the upcoming season. Am I overreacting? No. Uh, I'm not going to tell anybody how to fan or what to enjoy or what to believe or this, that, or the other. Me personally, over the last probably, not quite 72 hours, it's probably been a little bit more than that. I have, I have fallen more on the idea of maybe they should consider trading Damian Lillard. Because the Kings ransom they would get from a team like New Orleans would be huge. You look at what Zion has done as far as putting pressure on the organization uh, already uh, in New Orleans. You could get Ingram probably four firsts and two or three first-round pick swaps. Maybe Kira Lewis in there too. You reset your timeline um, accordingly. I think in that regard, 23-year-old Ingram, which is pretty good. Typically, you want to try to do it for a guy who hasn't hit that contract year yet so you can reset contracts. But I think if you're going to trade Dame, you're going to trade away Nurk. You're going to trade away Cove. You're going to trade away CJ. I think you have to restart entirely. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. But And again, I'm not like pushing the, like slamming the button as far as like hit the rebuild. But I'm leaning towards it. I still always, in my mind at least, I always want to say, as long as you've got that top 10 guy, you, you have to, to make it happen. You have to try something. I just don't believe that Neil O'Shea can get it done, and I don't believe he has the assets to get it done because he has screwed up so much over the last five years. Uh, <laughs> Nason. At the Nason, is it nice to be able to plan a mailbag podcast and not have to scrap it last minute because of some new bombshell day media drama? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, we did the live show on Thursday, and that was right before the quick piece about how they're running it back, and they also had a C.J. McCollum for top four pick, which I still I, I don't believe. I don't believe it was ever straight up uh, as part of a larger process, perhaps. Um, but, yeah, that just that didn't make any sense to me. But, yeah, it's it's nice. Shout out the Olympics for being a, a momentary distraction in that regard. Oh, wait, they're not that distracting because – the U.S. lost to France, and they're questioning the coach. And uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and stay away from that drama. <laughs> Josh Dollar at Josh Dollar is getting Siakam a viable option this off season. Toronto is shopping him. That much I know. I do not believe they have the goods to get Siakam. Uh, I I. I would assume he's a part of a larger deal, whether they wrap him up with number four for a young player to kind of soft reset. Um, for whatever reason, something went down in Toronto. I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but it's just ever since they, they kind of had their little bit of a falling out and Siakam got benched, it's been a little bit weird, and I think it's kind of been the writing on the wall in that regard. But I, Masai's not going to lose a trade. I, I just... So, I, unfortunately, I don't see a way for Portland to be able to, to go out and, and, and land Siakam as much as I love him. 
Um, ba, 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 ba. Matthew, at Reverend Romulus. Does another run to the conference finals change the way Dame feels, or do you think it's finals or nothing this year? If you're talking about being competitive in the conference finals, like game six, game seven, coin toss, something went we went sideways, maybe. But I think it's no. I could I could talk myself into that if they're like legitimately competitive and it's not just like the perfect storm of circumstances. Like a, two teams in a row are just beat up and you, know, you can asterisk the living hell out of it. Um, there's always some path for some team that gets easier to, uh, but not all paths are created equal. If it's one of those ones like we saw <laughs> when the Blazers went to the Western Conference Finals and they played an OKC team where you had a rest book just taking over the coaching reins and deciding he was going to try to man up Damian Lillard for five games and getting absolutely cooked. Um, and then you had a Denver team that just didn't know what they were doing quite yet, to be honest. Um, you had some unexpected circumstances. I think a quadruple overtime and uh, winning a game seven on the road in Denver. I think those were kind of unexpected things. And again, you know, tip your cap to Portland in that regard. Uh, but then they went up against Golden State and they looked a lot like uh, Denver Portland this year when Denver beat Portland and then they ran up against Phoenix and got absolutely housed. Like you just tell that the the levels were different. Um, and I, I know the Blazers had, you know, was it 14 point leads in all those games? Da, 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 da. They should have gotten one, maybe two, but they still got housed. So um, if they if they made a legitimate run, if they made a legitimate run, I, you could talk me into it because as much as I okay, so this is this is me trying not to be the pessimist. I genuinely believe that Damian Lillard wants to be here. Like I, I, I think he does want to be that guy. I think Steph Curry wants to be that guy in Golden State, like a Dirk legacy. Like it's so rare to do it, and that I think Dirk is elevated a little bit because of that. And I think Steph wants that, and I think Dame wants that. Steph has already got the title, so if he does, he probably gets a little bit of pass. Dame has said some things, obviously, that don't run from the grind stuff, everything kind of goes along with that. And his loyalty branding, that it would take a little bit of shine off that. But I still believe he wants to be here. So if you gave him a legitimate no BS excuse, like, yeah, okay, let's do this. Let's, let's do this. And then you reload one more time. And then you maybe could talk him into it. But after that, unless there's... Unless there's like consistent build, I, I the only thing I can liken it to is like the Raptors, like all of a sudden, boom, a massive move is made, and you're like, yeah, okay, now we're on paper, everyone in the league is looking at us like a, a legit title contender. Then, then yeah, but none of the dark horse stuff. I, I, we're past that stage now. Uh, Joel. Mr. Yolis, what does CJ's best possible season look like? We're po- we're potentially trying to trade him, so I'd say 40 per game, 10 rebounds and 6 blocks. Here's the thing. I I think CJ could maybe put out a little bit more output as a number one option, but I think as a number one scoring option, that team's not as good. Uh, he has serious holes in his game as far as getting to the rim, uh, creation aspects in the paint. Uh, finishing at the rim, drawing free throws. Uh, those kind of things are w- really important when you're talking about a number one uh, offensive option. Uh, even if you upped his usage a little bit, I think the efficiency goes down. We've already seen that without Dame on the floor. His efficiency drops pretty pretty noticeably. Not significantly, but noticeably. Um, so while the overall output might go out, the the, the uh, efficiency, I think, would, would hit a little bit harder um, when you look at what every number one option in the league can do. They can get to the line. They can create uh, consistently. They can score from every level. Da, da, da. Like you can just kind of figure it out. Even the ones that can't, they're so good at other. Like Giannis can't really shoot, but he's also Shaq in the paint. Like it's there's a little bit of give and take. CJ's the only thing that he is just tremendously good at is mid range jumpers, and can, those can come and go. Those are as we saw in the playoffs, those, those can disappear pretty quickly. And he doesn't have a way to, to make up for that by getting to the rim or getting the free throw line. And it could carry him those nights. 
Uh, that, and I think being the focus of a defense is the number one scoring option uh, as opposed to playing alongside Dame. I think that knocks it down a little bit. But I, th- I could see him being 25, 5, and 5. I, I, I think that's a reasonable line uh, just with the efficiency down, which, again, it's a good line. There's no doubt about it, but I just don't know much effectiveness and efficiency and utility you're getting out out of him otherwise. So take that for what it is. Uh, let's see. Josh uh, Josh Bullock, looking at likely scenarios, if the Blazers hit his force in a trading game, would they get more doing so now or next offseason? This is the magic question. If, if you move him now, you know the known quantities. You know that New Orleans has a truckload to offer. But maybe next year, I don't know. OKC moves some picks around. Somebody else becomes available. It could get a little bit weird, right? <laughs> um, Miami does something. The Knicks do something. I don't know. Not the Knicks. Uh, I don't know. The known quantity is that the Pelicans have a pretty damn good package. The Celtics can put something together that's pretty good. The 76ers package is okay. Um, like, you want to target OKC if you're talking about a rebuild, but they just don't. There's no reason. They have Shea, and they don't need a 31-year-old point guard. Um, so I, I think it's easier to say now, but I kind of want to say next year because it's the mystery box, right? You could you can get a little bit more out of it, and you're like, yeah, but, well, maybe, and you can talk yourself into it. Um, but beyond that, I don't I don't know. This one's a little bit fun. Uh, from Lost Oz 1, uh, what's the over-under for number of games next season before Olsay sucks chance start? Definitely something I'm looking forward to. Uh, there's a follow-up. My money is 100% on it happening at the Fan Fest if they do it this year. If not, warm-ups of the first preseason game. The difference between Blazers Twitter, Blazers social media, and like the general Blazers... Like, there are still people who think that running it back is a decent or good idea. Um, I think those people are insane. <laughs> but... Um, their season ticket sales are still, and I, I don't know how much of that is a product of, of the actual basketball versus, uh, you know, COVID and restart and some normalcy. Uh, I think this is a basketball starved town. Um, and that it always is. If you have a remotely decent product that people will go to, uh, hell, maybe the allure of Damian Lillard being in his last season is, is, is a draw of its own. I don't know, but, um, I, I still believe that an OJ sucks jet is probably going to break out pretty quickly. Colby McLaughlin at Colby Mac 92 Should the Blazers chase a Joe Ingles trade? I love Jingles. I think he's fantastic. They should not trade. They should not chase that trade. I think a team like the Lakers or the Clippers or any other team that's a competitive team that's talking about a title should definitely be looking at Joe Ingles as a playmaking defender, spot up shooter, creator. Yeah, I mean. I don't think the Blazers are a Joe Ingles away. Like, if they got him for nothing, sure, yeah, I'd love him. But giving up additional assets to get him? No. Um, that's just kind of how it goes. It, I don't, I'm don't. i not opposed to getting better. Like <laughs> that, But you also have to manage the timelines, and I think they've done a poor job of, of that across the board. Uh, I think they've done a poor job of, of uh, letting assets appreciate and, and capitalizing when they should. Um uh, and Joe's on the wrong side of 30. As much as I like him, I, I think he's a fantastic player, and I think he, come playoff time, he's a really valuable guy um, because that, that playmaking creation ability at that 3-4 position is one of the rarest and, and most valuable commodities in the league right now. Um, but yeah, I'd love him, but I just don't think it's something the Blazers should chase. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this name. It's Cavasiradu. Cavasirdu? Cavasirdu? Uh, that's what we're going to go with. Uh, at Cavasirdu. Hey, Danny, let's say we signed Norm Powell for, say, 20 to 24 million. Dame at his 43.7. You had to replace the other three, three starters. How would you do it with our assets? I'm a big, like, if I can make a wave a magic wand for something that's, like, semi realistic, I would do something along the lines of the uh, Nurk to. L.A., Kuzma, KCP, or Kuzma, Taylor Horton, Tucker to Indiana for Miles Turner, Miles Turner to Portland kind of deal. 
something along those lines. I, I think Turner is a better fit. Um, they both have their injury issues. I think uh, Turner gives you more ability, possibly as a shooter, um, more athleticism. He's a better defender than Nurk, especially as a shot blocker, but he's also giving up the rebounding ability and uh, lacks a little bit of, of, of bullying strength that Nurk has. But beyond that, I think that's a, a pretty solid move in that respect. I, I like Cove. Um, I am not opposed to packing up Cove and CJ together to trying to get the right three. Like I think that's that's kind of the the, the wave. Um, or you know you 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 figure if if you can't get Simmons and the CJ for Tobias Harris, um, reality is there. Sure, uh, I'm I'm not sure how the value scale would tip in that regard as far as does Portland need to add anything? Does Philly need to add anything? I think they're both overpaid for their productivity and their fits, but maybe that's a bit of a wash. Um, then you go out, so you've got Dame, Dorm, got a blank spot at the three, um, and you've got Harrison Turner. So maybe you're looking for a little bit more of a two-way guy. I, if you could do a sign and trade with Cove for, I don't, I don't know, DeRozan. Now you you kind of want DeRozan more as a four nowadays, a three-four, kind of sliding up, and you want Toby at the four. <sighs> I don't know. McDermott seems like a guy you could slot in at the three. I don't know if he's a starter or on a really good or competitive team. That three spot is just such a weird spot. I don't know. That's there's so many. Like, sure, I would love Siak. I'm sure I'd love Simmons. Uh, you could you can talk me into a lot of different guys. Uh, Jalen Brown. You know, it's just I I don't know how many of those are guys are actually viable. Realistically, a uh, uh, Paul George, the guys in between. You know, that you really want to get and kind of line up with their timelines. They're just too expensive, and the Blazers don't have the assets to get them. Uh, from Brian Strang at Broncos underscore squared. Has there been any recent news about Carl Anthony Towns uh, in regards to the Blazers or just in general? Like in general, I think he's okay. Uh, I saw him tweet about, I think it was uh, uh, in memoriam to his mother, uh, who obviously passed away last year due to COVID. Um, the guy had, has had a rough, rough couple couple of months, that's for sure. Um but as far as it pertains to the Blazers, the Blazers would have to give up everything for Cat. That's the other one. I knew I was forgetting another package. Listen, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, and a couple picks for Damian Lillard. That's that's the other one. That's like the readily available package outside of New Orleans. I'm sorry to kind of derail and come back to that, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's that's kind of where that one falls. Um, and this one from Jakob at just a guy on a hill. Hey, Danny, are signing Norman and keeping CJ mutually exclusive? Is there any situation where you see both of the roster next season? I personally think not. I do not believe that both can be on this team. There's a couple reasons why. If you run it back, quote-unquote, with what, with what we've heard, right, which I think is a, a some version of Dame, CJ, Norm, Cove, Nurkic, Ant, Nasir, TPMLE, BAE, vet men, signings, and whatever else you figure out. Because of the contract, so Dame's at 43, CJ's at 33, let's just stick Norm at 23, so 43, 33, 23. Uh, Nurk at 12, Cove at 14, um, oh, and DJ, I'd say DJ Opsen, DJ at 10. Uh, I think Nas and Ant are like four and three and Ellaby, and I think he's like two. When you get through everything and you factor in the dollar for dollar increases for everything as far as the luxury tax is concerned, I did rough math on it. It was like $177 million that team would cost, which is would rank as the most expensive team in I think in league history, if I'm not mistaken. But that's after the luxury tax payment. So it's it's a little bit different than pure raw price. But still. That's a stupidly expensive team for a first-round exit. Maybe a second round. You don't pay that kind of money for that for that team. That's just... Why? The Blazers have found a way to skirt the tax basically every year. 
they've kept the roster spot open. It hasn't been about competitiveness. It's about staying under the tax and making sure the bottom line still looks good. Like we keep hearing, we have this full support of ownership and uh, they've backed us. And then you're like, well, why haven't you signed anybody that last roster spot? Why are you still under the tax? You know, how did you find a way to finagle $300,000 just enough to get under the tax? Like, it's like, if that were the case, then everything else would look like it's supposed to. That's the money reason. Basketball reasons. I don't think Norm Powell wants to play the three hole the whole damn year. Why would a 6'4 guy want to sit there and get beat up for 82 games and play second fiddle to Damon CJ? Or excuse me, third fiddle to Damon CJ as far as touches go. Like, I, I know bringing Chauncey in, everybody thinks it's going to just change the world. I don't. I think it might change some things, but I, I don't think that Dame is going to fundamentally change how he plays. I don't think that CJ is going to fundamentally change how he plays. Like, does that pecking order change that much? Mm, I don't know. Is Norm is just getting twenty three million dollars? Is that enough to overcome that? I mean, for some people, probably. For Norm, could be. I don't know. It's a big moon, you know. Um, but I just it's it's very hard for me to picture that. It's not impossible, but I just it's hard for me to picture that. And then that's another kind of guardish uh, guy on the roster in that respect. If you're Anthony Simons, does you know? I know there he's a restricted free agent after this next year, but does he want to stay around stuck behind two guards again? Like it's just, there's a lot of different things that when you're slotting a team building and looking forward, which you have to continually do as a GM or president of basketball operations. Um, so yeah, I just, it, it's hard for me to see it. Not impossible. Just hard. It's probably harder for me to see it on the, on just the pure money side, let alone the, the basketball side. But yeah, I, I do think they are mutually exclusive for the most part. But then again, I've seen guys go places and stay places for a truckload of money before. And if Norm decided to stay here because they backed up the Brinks truck for him, so be it. Go with God. Get the bag. Always. Uh, you get the bag and you sort it out later. <laughs> so um, it's very hard for me to see them having both guys on this roster. Because if you if you carry them into the trade deadline... Um, Everybody kind of knows that you, you've got to get rid of them to save on that massive tax bill. Um, so uh, even more leverage is going to be taken away at that point in time. But, yeah, I think that's kind of where it ultimately ends up landing. So, all right, well, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. Thank you, everybody. A uh, little bit of news here real quick. Uh, we will have the uh, live show. It's going to be uh, what draft day. So, um uh, I will be going in for my uh, pre-consult for surgery the day before, and then hopefully everything goes well. <laughs> I'm not under the knife right away, uh, but I do have a bunch of content almost done. I'm going to finish that up over the next couple of days that I've got pre-scheduled to release. Uh, I do have a, uh, a a big announcement coming. I, I, I'm pretty certain I've got a co-host, so uh, I'm really excited. Uh, I, I think you guys will, will love it. Um, thank you as always. Please like, rate, review, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, wherever, um, thank you. I appreciate you across the board. Uh, if you're on iTunes, please leave a review. Anything else, uh, just thanks for downloading. Uh, appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I will catch you guys here in a couple of days, right? Uh, it's going to be a busy, busy, busy week, so stay tuned. If we get some uh, big-time breaking news, I'll probably pop on and do a live show for a little bit. Uh, we'll wrap from there. Until then, guys, take care. Talk soon. Bye. <laughs>